Hello plant friends, my name is Jimmy. I'm a doctor and tropical plant hobbyist in LA and this channel is about plants. So today we have another unboxing video. Um, so this package is from Japan and it's from Monstera underscore Albo. So this is my first package from Japan. It seems like Japan is, I don't know, I don't know if there's something happening with their Monstera, you know, their variegated Monstera albos. Um, yeah, it seems like they're importing or exporting more and more. So I think that's, that's great. So, you know, the more options we have and the more sources we have to get plans, you know, it's always better to have more options, right? Uh, but this is the first time I've gotten a package from Japan. So this package was delivered or it was sent to the Japanese post on December 23rd. It got delivered or attempted to be delivered at my place on December 30th. Uh, I was doing an overnight shift that night. It was like, well, it was basically a 24 hour shift that day. So um, the post office was unable to deliver the package. The package required a signature. Um, and then I think, I don't know what happened sometime over the, the New Year's holiday. It screwed up with the post office. And um, so today I actually had to go to the post office and pick it up. So today is December 3rd. So these plants have been in the package for almost, almost two weeks, right? So it took about a week for the package to get to my place on the first attempted delivery. And then with the screw up, the, the plants have been in the package for almost almost two weeks. Okay, um, yeah. So let's uh, let's see how how they're doing. Uh, so oh my gosh. So this is the the package. Um, first of all, I'm I'm very very impressed with uh, how big the box is. I know that some sellers will be really skimpy and like you know use a really small box and really like pack the plants in there. So I'm glad that the seller uh, did not. Okay. Um, so just thinking about, you know, one week from the Japanese post office to the first attempted delivery about one week, I think that's, that's really, really impressive. That means that the FIDO sanitation certificate was spot on. Um, you see this, you can see this green tape that says that it's been examined by uh, U.S. Customs, right? So for the plant to get over here through Customs in, and then to my door the first time in, in about a week's time, it's probably, it's even, yeah, it's about a week's time. That's, that's really good. That means that the seller really, you know, did everything correctly, so. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get this guy out. Oh my. Okay. Uh, the seller did not skimp on the tape. <laughs> Alright. So, huh. Alright. Okay. So this is one specimen, all right? Plenty of roots. Um, so this thing, if you guys can see, is, um, I, so this would be considered a very well-rooted cutting, okay? So a lot of these roots are aerial roots, right? So they're not, they're not like soil roots. So, yeah. I don't think they're really soil roots. I think there's a lot of good area roots. Um, so the thing about these is that it's, you know, I think when you have a lot of roots like these, like area roots that are not soil roots, it's, you have to be really, really careful about what exactly to do to do next. I find that when you put area roots into the soil, they, they don't do really well and they tend to, to rot a lot. Um, so usually what I do is I either water propagate or I put them in sphagnum moss. I think with this guy, considering that this part is so long, um, what I think I'm going to do is that I'm probably going to, to chop it off 
about here somewhere and then root this guy in water and then put either this guy this lower half in water or or sphagnum so i think that's what that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to try to get you know keep this plant and then um, see if there's something if uh, something else can grow from from this plant so this part will probably with the leaves will probably go into probably water and then this part I'm probably going to put in sphagnum I'm very happy with this there's a lot to work with I suspect that as this part up here is um, rooting in water as in like you know we'll see some some roots coming off these these area roots uh, I would not be surprised if a lot of these white leaves uh, turned you know burnt or I lost a leaf here or there I would not be surprised I think it's it's just part of the transition period or the transition process and um, yeah it's you know it's just it's just part of it so as long as the roots are there and the roots are good then um, the plants can be can be great Okay, yeah, so I think this is, this is great. Uh, so yeah, I'm probably just going to chop, you know, have one in there, and then this part I'll probably put in sphagnum. Um, and I think it's going to do, it's going to do really well. Yeah, I think this is great. And obviously the, the leaves are very, very white. If we look at the stem, right, we're looking at the stem. Um, the stem is very white. It's very variegated. If anything, this is a bit more variegated than I normally prefer. I normally prefer a greener stem just because, you know, I feel like they're, you know, I don't have to deal with leaf burn as much. I feel that, um, yeah, I, I prefer just like greener plants and that's just like my, my personal preference. I feel like the greener ones do uh, grow faster um, and they're a little bit more robust. But, I mean, you got to say like, you know, it, it's kind of hard to, to not like... <laughs> the really really white one so um yeah i'm really really happy with this so i think the packaging has been has been excellent so that's one thank you for all this uh sphagnum i'm just gonna reuse it This is another specimen right here. Great, basically the same. It's another, um, another cutting, a rooted cutting. So I think for this guy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, for this guy, I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably gonna trim the roots a little bit, and then just plop them plop it in in water as well yeah so so I think for this guy you know there's you can see that there's a lot of stem right um, so the thing is that even as this part roots you're not gonna get or most likely you're not gonna get new new leaves coming out of it right so so the new leaves are just going to come from from up here so the question is like, well, when you have something like this, what are you, like, what are you going to do? Are you just going to leave it like this? And it's probably not as visually appealing as, as some of us would like. So what I'm going to do with this guy is that I'm probably going to find a good vase, like a tall vase, clean up the roots a little bit, and then, um, and then see what, what roots come out. Of, of this. So I'm hoping that I'll have some roots down here and then I'll have some roots up here and and then once it's well rooted I'm, I'm just gonna try to you know chop it off and split one lower half and then one half up here. So 
So that way, if I have roots up here, I can plant this guy and have him as one plant. And then this guy, you know, I, I normally don't, I normally don't split them, you know. I normally have a very generous cutting because I feel like that's, they're more likely to live. But yeah, um, so hopefully I can get, you know, one guy up here and then one guy down here. But I'm going to wait till after I have more roots down here as well as roots up here. So, so yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the roots that it currently has a little bit, right? Some of these are, are sort of broken and they're a little flimsy. So they're not, I can't just like stick this guy in the soil. Uh, so I'm just going to, yeah, plop, plop him in water, uh, watch him. He's going to do fine. He's going to do great. And, and yeah, hopefully I'll have a lot of roots down here and a lot of roots up here so I can get two plants out of this, right? I normally wait till I have a very robust uh, uh, water root system, right? So there's a lot of water roots uh, because I always assume that a good amount of water roots, once you plop them in soil or substrate, I normally go from from water to a very high uh, high perlite concentration substrate. Uh, that way, you know, it's very airy, it's very well draining, um, and I think they the roots kind of do well. But even still, you know, when you transition from water to you know, a solid substrate, just just know that some of the roots are, are not going to make it. So I'm just gonna wait till a really good water root system, and then I'm going to, yeah, uh, chop it in half, right? Uh, I think another way to do this is that you can chop it in half, or, you know, um, chop it now, and then propagate this part, you know, in water or spag, and then chop the smaller parts in or propagate those smaller parts in water or spag as well. But I, I prefer to just leave it. I think it's, you know, I think you're just messing around with it way too much. Uh, so why not just leave it as a whole as much as you can and then wait for the roots to come out that way. So so that's, that's my goal with this guy. And then, ooh. and then basically, basically the same for, this is the, the third guy. A girl, or a girl, guy. <laughs> um, so the leaves look really good, and yeah. Uh, so, so for this one, bum bum bum, bum 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 bum. bum. So this one, I'm probably gonna do the same. I'm probably just gonna uh, stick the whole thing in a tall vase in water, and then see what happens with the roots, right? I think ideally. Ideally, uh, I can split this like right here, so or maybe into like thirds, right? Because it, it just makes it a little bit more structurally appealing, right? If that if something you guys are interested in or want, um, I'm more about just like practical practicability and survivability. And really, the only reason why I would chop these up is that again, you know, if like these nodes down here, they're not going to have new new leaves coming out of them usually so you're just you know the plant isn't structurally gonna be that I guess appealing as, as some other plants and then um, you know you can all, always cut down here and then like what are you gonna do with the rest you might as well try to get another plant out of it and it's it's actually not not that difficult let's compare the the stems for a little bit all right so So you see this this stem right here for this this is the first guy that we saw, right? The stem very very white, and you can see that the leaves are reflecting that, right? The, um, you're having a lot of lot of white in this one. In this one, you have a lot more green, right? And then that's reflected in the the leaves as well, right? But I, I like this. I, I prefer it to be a little bit more more green than than something like this, right? Like if I had a choice, right? Sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes it's just you know you get you get what you can get. But I think if you do have a choice, you you want something that's a little bit more more green like this. I know that a lot of people have the tendency to get something that's more white because you're afraid that it's going to revert. Um, with variegated monstera, I feel that it's they're they're equally likely to go both ways, right? They're equally likely to get you know all white, 
and then they're equally likely to revert and get sort of all green. So um, when you're trying to decide to get one, ideally you want something sort of in the sort of in the middle. And I think this one, you know, let's see, you know, if you're thinking about how variegated this guy is and you gave a percentage, I would say this one's what, about like 40? 40% 40 variegated? Maybe, maybe, yeah, probably like about, you know, 35, 40, 40-ish percent variegated. Um, a little less than half, right? Definitely less than half variegated. So, so I think that's, that's a good range if you, you know, want it on the greener side. And then, and then this guy, right? This guy is probably um, a little bit, this one's a little bit more, more variegated than the other one, right? So this one's probably, I'd say 50 to 60 percent, right? You're looking at the, the stem, it's about like 50 percent. So this one, you know, this one would be a very, a very good choice um, for those who sort of want, you know, to be on the very, very safe side of, you know, I guess you want, you want it variegated and also you don't want it too variegated, right? So this would be a, a very, very good specimen to, to start off with. Right, we're talking about the variegation and the stem. Um, like I said, this first, this one would be for those who are a little bit more conservative and are okay with a little bit more green. Um, again, more green, more chlorophyll. It's usually more robust and it grows faster. Uh, and then for those who really, really like white, um, then again, this one is this one's very, very variegated. Right, in my book, this one is a bit too too variegated. Um, so my fear for this one is that over time it's going to turn basically completely white. Oh, I think this is also a good time to address this question about, well, if I have a leaf that's, you know, all white, what what should I do? So, so you can see this leaf right here, this is probably, I think this is, oh no, this is not the newest leaf. This is, I think this guy is sort of the newest the newest leaf, right? So you can see that with this one, and you know, you compare this one, which is the leaf before. So this one going, right? This one, you're like, oh no, maybe it's getting too white. This one, like, oh no, it's really, really getting too white. Um, and then this one, it, it turned, it turned a little bit more green, right? So, so I think that one is that when you're, when you're having these fears of it's turning too white or if it's getting too reverted and it's too green, um, the only really the only way to prevent that or fix it is to, to chop it off back to where there's a more even distribution of variegation in the stem, right? So if this is way too white, I kind of like go back and I look and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, there's more there's more green here, so maybe I'll just like chop it back here and hope that the the new leaves that come off from around here has more, either more green or more variegation, whatever I'm, I'm looking for, right? But that's really the only way to, to actually do it. Some people talk about light. It's, it's not about light, okay? So um, light affects like, you know, the green parts, they can get greener or less green, but it doesn't affect the variegated parts that are incapable of creating or producing the chlorophyll or the green pigment. Okay, so so for this guy, you know, like I said, I think, um, you know, when you're having this fear, if it's too reverted or too variegated, my suggestion is to sort of just wait it out a little bit, right? See, you know, wait for the next leaf or the next two leaves and see what happens. Um, you know, sometimes they kind of, you know, go back the other way. And, but yeah, sometimes you just, you have like two or three white leaves in a row and then yeah, you're <laughs> then then you sort of have to 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 cut it back. Or if you have two or three just completely green leaves in a row, then I think you know if you if you don't like that, then you you can cut it back. But I would wait. I would wait for a couple leaves to see the plant you know prove itself, uh, and and sort of just give it a give it a good chance. Um, yeah, yeah. So oh, I think I think the last thing we can talk about is that. Again, these are these are um, rooted cuttings, right? These because 
I consider these rooted cuttings because there are roots, but these roots are not soil roots, right? So you, I would consider these rooted cuttings as opposed to, um, you know, full, full plants. Uh, I think the last thing is that, you know, if you had a choice and you were offered these three plants, um, like which one would you choose? And I think that sort of that depends on your preferences as well as your goals. I think if you're talking about, if you're thinking about propagating, right, then you would probably want the one with as many nodes as you can get, right? So, so probably if you're thinking about let's propagate, let's get as many plants out of this as we can, then probably you would probably pick this one because it has the most nodes. If you're keeping it for yourself and you're and you're kind of like, oh, I want one that grows the fastest, that are gonna give me like leaves and maybe my humidity is not that high, so I'm also worried about leaf burn and I don't want you know all my leaves to look ugly. You probably want this one. You probably want the greenest one that has the most chlorophyll, that can provide the most energy, uh, that is very well marbled. So. If this one were to burn, you would, I would probably expect, and you kind of see, there's some burn on the, the predominant uh, sectored white parts. But as you see overall, the, the plant is very well marbled, very green. So this plant is going to be probably the, the least dramatic <laughs> and the most stress-free out of all, all the, the three that I've, I've shown. Right? So um, if we're talking about like a personal plant, I, I also would, would like this. Uh, I would, or I would pick this one, and then I think this was probably more towards, you know, this this one's good too. Lots of nodes, and also a good amount of white. Um, yeah, this one, this would also be a good, a good one to to have for my personal collection or to to propagate as well. So I think uh, all of this is this is great. I, uh, yeah. So again, this is my first shipment from Japan. And I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, I thought the, sh the packaging was great. Uh, it definitely came at a good, in a good time period. You know, one week, yeah, I think the seller did all the, the right things. Communication was, well, was good. Again, this is Monstera underscore Albo on Instagram. Um, so that's, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to more of what Japan has to offer. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's something happening with variegated monstera in, the Jap in Japan, if they're doing tissue culture, which I thought wasn't even possible for the, the variegated monstera albos. Um, but yeah, I think uh, J Japan is really proving itself to be, uh, or starting to prove itself to be a player in the, the plant game in terms of exporting or importing. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to see what they have to offer in the future. Okay, so I think that's it for this video. Thanks guys for, again, for, for joining me. I know this is super casual and <laughs> very random topics and stuff. So um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, comment below. Please like, subscribe if you like the content. And if you have any other questions, I, I hope, uh, yeah, definitely just ask away. I hope this gave you guys some insight on sort of like what I do with specimens like these when I get them. Um, yeah. Till next time, happy planting.